All right, we are back. I'm getting on my soapbox. Let's talk about Raw quick. So it was a 1.759 million next to 1.818, and it was a 0.53 demo instead of a 0.57 demo from last week. A significant, well, not a significant drop, a drop nonetheless. It just, the, the whole show felt very weird. There was not a whole lot of structure within it. The main event was fine, but, you know, Kevin Owens being hurt, is putting the tag team champions into a state of what the hell's going on with it. And this is the go-home show for SummerSlam. You would have thought that there would have been something better here. Uh, Trish and Becky had their match on Raw instead of at SummerSlam. To be honest with you, I think they made the right call overall. The entire rivalry was basically spinning its wheels in the mud pretty much since Crown Jewel. Mm -hmm. So why bother having it on a huge show? You need to put the bigger matches on that show, and if they didn't feel like it was to that standard, it's not to that standard. In hindsight 2020, I have to agree with them. They should have struck when the iron was hot with Becky and Trish when they did. And after that match, it should have been done. But they didn't. They wanted to continue it, and the entire momentum died. There was not really a whole lot of other things. Shins Shinsuke's heel again. Maxine Dupree is getting better in the ring. Um, but Valhalla is not. So, NXT. NXT was a 717K instead of a 703K. And it was a .23 next to, well, .23. So, they actually went up a little bit, which is good. So, uh, Gallus. The Gallus six-man tag with Santos and the D'Angelo family. I like the main event, but it just was like, let's just put more WWE stars in here because I think they're trying to go after um, AEW overall. But we'll talk about that when we get to talk about that. Uh, Eric, uh, Eddie Thorpe and Dijak was fine. There was just a whole lot of fineness here. Uh, Baron Corbin and Andre Chase was actually a good match because we're starting to see some... Uh, we're starting to see some friction between in within Chase U, which I think is definitely needed. And there was not really a whole lot of other things that happened on this show. Oh, it looks like that Wes Lee is going to be the next contender for the NXT Championship. He is now um, basically in like a yelly, screamy match with Carmelo Hayes. So I am okay with that overall. Dynamite's 200th episode. Went down in ratings. <laughs> it did. So it was 894 compared to 800 or 800, 894,000 next to 898. And it was a 0.31 demo instead of a 0.29. So it went up in demo, but down in ratings, but very insignificant for the most part. Uh, the main event was an absolute nothing. They just did moves. That's all it was. The anything goes. It was just there. It was cool seeing some originals, but I kind of wish they played more into the history of AEW a little bit. It was a very missed opportunity mm -hmm. for it. Um, uh, Jericho and Kanosuke taking on Daniel Garcia and Sammy Guevara. They're still trying to keep Jericho Appreciation Society a thing when it's clearly dead. I don't care about it at this point. They're doing like a little reunion or a little meeting next week. So, yeah, then anyways, uh, Rob Van Dam showing up, especially after what he said on Twitter all those years ago about how Impact Wrestling was more of a get than uh, AEW. I found that to be hilarious. Also, he is old. Why are we doing this? Yeah, it got a fun little pop from the fans, but this was Rob Van Dam's debut. Not, it, we should be doing throwback here instead of, oh, let's just do this again. Let's bring in Rob Van Dam for a match. And Jack Perry, I mean, at the very least, they're putting Jack Perry against these legends that people are known for, but at the same time, did it do anything for the ratings? No, it didn't. It, it didn't. I'm sorry. Rob Van Dam is not that big draw that you think he is. Impact Wrestling saw it, WWE saw it, he was there in 2007, but that's, you know, almost 20 years ago. Right. He's 51. I think it's about time that we stop play, We stop doing that. Let's build up new stars. And I guess they're trying to do it with Jack Perry, which I'm okay with overall. Uh, the Elite match was fine. Um, unfortunately, they took on Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, and Satnam Singh. Instead of the Elite facing, I don't know, another homegrown group right they decided to go after former tna and wwe stars yeah like what are we why are we doing that 
And then there was a Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship match with El Hio, Del Vikingo, and Commander challenging. The match itself was fine, but once again, super random. Like, a super random match, super random title match for no reason. Impact Wrestling. So, I did find Impact Wrestling review or um, ratings and demo from last week, but I couldn't find it for this week. They had 153,000 people watch it. It was a .02. It was the most viewed Impact in like 18 months so, so that's, that's very good yeah. they are they're really climbing impact wrestling is that little that little promotion that's really starting to come back and i am all for it so i like impact uh the rascals had a tag match with jonathan gresham and speedball mike bailey the only thing i don't like is that i feel like they just have no idea what to do with jonathan gresham or mike bailey yeah it is like they're teaming again but they were having friction it's like right what are we doing with that uh, Kenny King, John, Joe Hendry, I almost said John Hendry, Joe Hendry and Yura Uramura had a digital media title match, it was fine, uh, Deanna Perrazzo and Trinity took on the Coven, it was fine, there was not really a whole lot outside of that, but, you know, Trinity is being the draw, and that's probably why they got a good rating, I'm not sure yet. So, SmackDown, obviously, I did not find ratings, but last week got 2.2, or 2.323, Jesus tries to say that five times fast, million viewers and it was a 0.61 demo and that was for last week uh jimmy or ju so and so sokoa had a fine match this was obviously with hindsight in mind eo sky lost to zelina vega for some reason i have no idea why uh grayson waller effect with damage control was good because shotzi returned and i like the look it was, it's actually working for her mm -hmm. overall so i'm very happy about that um, other than that, there just wasn't really a whole lot there. Um, it was a go home show for SummerSlam. Yep. Uh, LA Knight and Sheamus had a fine match despite the botch. It's like, yeah, he fell backwards on the ropes. Okay. Make mistakes. It happens. They recovered well. So, let's talk about Collision. Which was uh, competing with SmackDown. Summer, or SummerSlam. Sum, yeah, SummerSlam. Uh, so last week was a 739,000, which was once again down. Yeah, it's oh, actually, I heard I heard through the grapevine that preliminary numbers have come out. I think this week only had 610,000. Ouch. Yeah. But and again, this is what happens when you put a show on a Saturday. Don't put shows on Saturday. Especially when you're talking about competing with a big four. Yeah, it's like, what are we doing here? I don't know. And also, not only that, but you had the Jake Paul boxing fight. Yeah. You really think you're going to compete and get better ratings? Come on. Some were saying we did awesome, I'm sure. And it was a .27 demo. The ratings just continue to fall, even if there is no competition. You know why? Because people don't want to watch a show on a fucking weekend. Yeah. And if before you get into me with the DVR, I, I need tangible numbers to understand it. So don't come at me with that. Right. Stupid. Uh, CM Punk and Ricky Starks had a match for the real world's champion. Whatever. There were like three title matches in this show. They were really trying to compete. Uh, House of Black had a bunch of randoms face each them for the trios champions. Uh, Samoa Joe called out CM Punk for Wembley, even though MJF and CM Punk for ti for the titles is a much better match. But guess what? I'm I feel like they're waiting until all out for that, yeah. which I think would be an enormous mistake. You need the best card for Wembley. You got the tickets already, which is great. But you got to put on a better thing than Adam Cole and MJF again for the world champion. That is not that caliber of a match for a stadium. I'm yeah. sorry. It's not. Yeah, you know, whatever works for them. God, it's stupid. Um, and they continued to book the women horribly mm -hmm. because Chris Salander had a TBS champion match with um, uh, Mercedes Martinez, and they just had a bunch of people run out, including Diamante. Hmm, kind of interesting there. But I do like the feel of the show still. I will always rant positively about it because they it does feel like a different show. Just wish it was on a better night. And then finally, FTR defended the Tag Team Champions against Big Bill and Brian Cage. I liked it. I liked the team of Big Bill and Brian Cage. A lot of Bs. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, FTR continue, just continuing to be a great tag team. Oh, and then they challenged the Young Bucks rubber match for the titles at Wembley. That's a better match there. But that is my soapbox. When we come back, we're going to be talking about SummerSlam.